Do you ever wonder if homeschool is a good choice for you? Comment below with your questions, concerns, or ask about a setting up a time to discuss how to start your homeschool journey. All right. Well, good morning and welcome to Homeschool Conversations. I'm Rebecca Good and I have Peter Gregory here with me today. And thank you, Peter, for coming back. Um, we recorded some months back and uh, we had some sound issues. So we are back at it today um, and new things going on in education and the news. And so um, hopefully we can make this even better than last time and we'll have clear sound for everybody. Um, so Peter, if you would just take a minute to introduce yourself um, we're going to talk some today about simulation learning, um, but we may touch on other topics, you know, parents' rights and, you know, why, what's going on with the, the state of public education, why people are pulling away from it, what are some of the alternatives. But Peter, if you will introduce yourself and uh, we'll kind of get into it. Yes, thanks for having me back again. We did have a good session. We're going to keep doing this till we get it right, until the sound's right on this. But uh, good yeah. to be back and talk to you again, Rebecca. We've always had great conversations about this as, as it is. I'm glad that uh, you're able to give me a call and, and we'll talk about it here. Uh, yeah, my background is a little bit eclectic. And, and so I think I represent a, a good cross-section of a lot of students out there as, as what I wanted to get out of education ever. Uh, you know, my, my career er, earlier on, when I came out of college, I was an engineering student and uh, I went to a big state university center here in New York State. And, you know, that was its own experience. And you have to kind of carve everybody. It's such a it was such a huge environment. It was like really going from high school off to work. My, my, my job was really you're on your own at one of these big colleges like this, one of these big state universities. So, you know, that was my experience for higher ed. Um, you know, I, I had gone through uh, Catholic school to begin with, public high school, and then uh, I did, uh, you know, the state university. Since then, I, I've also gotten a couple other degrees, and I'm working on a dissertation right now for a doctorate, which ha was part of the, the career path. And um, I consider myself, you know, forever learning, you know, an adult learner, uh, trying to develop my own techniques all the time for how to get competent with any concept that there might be, you know, and, and recognizing that. So, you know, it was really great when I first started. I worked for Xerox. It was a corporate research group offsite, and it, it fostered critical thinking. It really promoted making errors. And I'd never really rematched that after leaving that environment. But when you get into an innovation area, which we can think about, it's a safe area, you know, and that's safe from, you know, criticisms and critique, well, not critique, but criticisms, uh, very, you know, cross promotional supportive environments. And that's what, you know, schools at every level should be, not that life is always like that. So there's always a crossover there as to always provide, you know, realistic experience for students along the way. Uh, but but along the way, uh, I ended up working with a number of startup companies, tech startup companies, started my own consulting business to uh, tech companies for developing market and, and gaining attraction from uh, from investors. And one thing led to another. I ended up directing for five years a uh, business incubator. OK, so again, I, that was really my niche was always working with people that were innovative, being supportive of them. And, uh, you know, sometimes counselor, sometimes therapist for some of these people that, you know, I, I had been through it quite a few times. And, and I think my style has always been to share everything, be very transparent, promote other people, help them get up and competent, whatever it is their next challenge might be. And I started speaking at a local college here, a guest speaking, uh, you know, I had met a professor in the business department and things went really well. I was just speaking there for their international program and uh, they ended up asking me to come in and it was kind of a funny story, but I, they started out asking me to teach one class and within two weeks they had asked me to start as a visiting professor full time. So, so I never had planned on being in the world of education, but I was totally comfortable from the first minute I stepped in the classroom because for me it was just sharing. You know, of course, when you go to teach a course, you, you know, I was given a lot of freedom, but you have to develop a curriculum. I didn't use what was there before. It was never really available to me. And uh, I developed some business courses and I've had broad experience. So I was able to teach a number of different courses. And you could see whether it was hard information or maybe soft, uh, you know, interpersonal type topics that we had to talk about. You could see the difference between the uptake from the students. Most of the times it would be very similar students in one class to another to another because they're in a program, a business program. 
And so after a few years of that, they had asked me to go on a ten. They gave me the option, put it that way, to go on a tenure path, which I did. And so I ended up working as a professor for seven years. I call it working because I really brought industry into that. And, and mm. you know, for the purposes of business, uh, I was very alert to make sure that the students were coming out with very useful skills. And, and that's why you had mentioned earlier here today simulation. And so I had... Uh, adopted using computer simulation, which it doesn't all have to be computer, and sometimes it shouldn't be computer, mm -hmm. as it is. Uh, but but since then, I've actually uh, gone back into industry, if you will, just recently this year, and uh, I have actually my finger in a number of educational projects that uh, could be products uh, that will end up helping maybe students at all all ages. But you know, most of my experience when I came into higher ed, I, I wanted to know once you pull the veil back on higher ed, what goes on behind there? What do all these, prof you know, people that have education to doctorates and things like that, what do they know? What do they do? And I felt a little intimidated at first, if there was any part of it walking in was, what does everybody else know here? I'm going to use what I know. Am I going to make any mistakes? But they were very supportive. The business school itself was very good, very supportive of everything we did, gave me a lot of freedom. <clears throat> and I figured it out I've been in enough classes <laughs> that, you know, we all have, we've all been, you know, we all, maybe we have degrees or not, but, you know, you've spent a lot of time in the classroom. That's what my major attitude was. Okay, how hard could this be? And then I grew with that. I, I grew with what are the challenges? What are, now you start peeling it back as to the students, you know, what do you really need to know or do as a, an instructor for a student? So that should bring us about up to date. And as I said, I have my finger in a number of projects right now that stem from relationships I had built while a professor and even before that, but it, but it has to do with always moving people forward with knowledge, skills, and uh, maybe worldview too, <laughs> part of that. Do you ever wonder if homeschool is a good choice for you? Comment below with your questions, concerns, or ask about a setting up a time to discuss how to start your homeschool journey.